Let's turn our attention now to ribosomes. This illustration summarizes what we know about them. They're composed of two subunits, a large one and a small one. Each subunit is composed of one or more ribosomal RNAs and 21 or more proteins. Prokaryotic ribosomes are smaller than those of eukaryotes. The difference in size is in part due to larger ribosomal RNAs and more ribosomal proteins in the eukaryotic subunits. As you can see from this slide, we measure the sizes of the ribosomal RNAs and of the subunits themselves in what are called S units, named after Svedborg, the fellow who devised the technique to actually separate molecules like ribosomal RNAs and these small particles in the cell, the ribosomal subunits, by centrifugation. You should be able to find free ribosomal subunits and polyribosomes or polysomes. Polysomes are ribosomes assembled on a messenger RNA molecule and may be attached to membranes, which means they're bound, or not, which means they're unbound. Bound polysomes are attached to rough endoplasmic reticulum and the outer membrane of the nuclear envelope in eukaryotes and are the site of synthesis of proteins destined to leave the cytoplasm, which we would call packaged proteins. Think about this question. Where might bound polysomes be found in a bacterium, in prokaryotes? In this slide, the left panel illustrates a cell containing inactive ribosomes, most likely as separate subunits. The cell, in this case, is from a dried out or desiccated desert plant called the resurrection plant. After a few hours, this plant, when placed in water, becomes metabolically active. And by six hours, the cells are actually synthesizing new proteins. The panel on the right, then, is a transmission electron micrograph of such a cell that has been hydrated, showing that the ribosomes have now clustered very clearly into short polysome chains.